guys, so I am 22 weeks and one day pregnant today. So this will be my 22 week vlog. I told you I would be back. Yeah, I kind of had to force myself to do this one. But this one is actually pretty important because a lot of things have been going on this past week and I have everything written down in my notes on my phone. So I'm just going to start with last Thursday because I told you guys that I was going to my midwife, well, my midwife at my doctor's office for my monthly prenatal appointments. Um, I wasn't really sure how much I would end up weighing, but it turns out that I gained six pounds in four weeks, which is actually really good because I hadn't gained anything so far in this pregnancy. So I now weigh 115 pounds. Um, which is still a little bit under the average weight that you're supposed to have gained at this point But I'm pretty sure the pounds are going to start coming because six pounds in one month is a lot So um, when I went back I told my nurse that I had been experiencing a lot of round ligament pains and a lot of cramping And she told me that I could cramp as much as I want as long as I'm not bleeding Which I have not been bleeding at all during this pregnancy So she said go ahead and bring it up to my midwife whatever because maybe I'll feel a little bit better just bringing it up to her. So when my midwife came in, I told her about the cramping and everything like that and she was actually pretty concerned, which I was surprised about since I thought it was just round ligament pains. She decided to go ahead and just check my cervix and make sure that everything looked okay and when she did, she said that my cervix was still closed but that it felt like it was shortening. Um, that was a little bit frightening because I hadn't really looked into cervixes and what they're supposed to be like while you're based on my research normal cervical length while you're pregnant is four centimeters to five centimeters so she ended up deciding to send me to a high-risk pregnancy center the next day to have that checked out and put me on light bed rest for one week so one week off of work also had my blood drawn for the quad screening that day which was kind of the cutoff point to where um they check for things like neural tube defects and Down syndrome. So the next day, Nick and I ended up going to the high-risk pregnancy center because, because they could fit me in that day. And I had a level 2 ultrasound, which I didn't know at that point in time that it was a level 2 ultrasound, but I guess it was. It's basically like an anatomy scan, again. And everything looked fine. They checked my cervical length and it was at 4.25 centimeters, which is actually really long and I didn't mention in my previous videos that at 14 weeks they saw that I had a placenta previa which is kind of normal at the beginning of your pregnancy because it'll go away but my midwife told me that it had gone away at 18 weeks and two days for my first anatomy scan. When they looked at my ultrasound at the high risk place they said that I did still have a placenta previa and that we need to go ahead and check it at 31 weeks. 99% of the time placenta previews clear up and basically what that means is your placenta is laying over your cervix or kind of coming through your cervix therefore the baby cannot be born vaginally because there's really no way out. So if it hasn't cleared up by 31 weeks then I guess we'll probably be having a c-section but it's highly unlikely 1 in 200 pregnancies end up with a full previa at the end of your pregnancy. On Saturday, I received a missed call and voicemail from my midwife and she didn't say what she was calling for, but I assumed it was just to tell me that everything looked okay with my cervix because she had heard back from the high risk center. Um, so I didn't really think much about it and I just gave her a call back on Monday. Of course, she's in busy with patients so I couldn't get a hold of her. Um, I had kind of been thinking of switching to a doctor at a different location because I wasn't really liking her bedside manner because she had been wrong about my previa and wrong about my cervix so I would feel more comfortable just being under the care of somebody else plus I want to deliver at a different hospital <clears throat> that she does not deliver at so I was actually on the phone with a different office trying to schedule an appointment when her call came in on the other line so I had to get off the phone with them and try to answer her call but I missed it she left me a voicemail but I had already I was already trying to call her back at that point so I didn't even listen to the voicemail and of course they couldn't get a hold of her so by the time I hung up um, and went and listened to the voicemail it turned out that her voice message were, was for something completely different she didn't mention anything about my cervix 
she said that my blood screening, the quad screening, had come back negative for neural tube defects but positive for Down syndrome. And at that point in time, I had no idea what the screening even detected or what a positive meant. And I was just pretty upset because I'm, I was certain that she was telling me that the baby had Down syndrome because she said that it came back positive. So I called them back immediately trying to get a hold of her, did a lot of research, which was a little bit comforting because I found out that it's more so an odds based thing, but I did not know what my numbers were. Positive could be anything. So about four hours later, <clears throat> my midwife ended up calling me back and kind of explaining things to me. She said that my odds are 1 and 247. Um, I didn't know what normal was at the time, so I'll, I'll get to that later because this is a really long story. So 1 in 247, and she said that that was just high risk for my age, ethnicity, and the levels that came back. So basically, if you have 247 women who are the same age as me with the same background and history and about the same um, levels of HCG, and I can't remember what else they look for, one of those women will have a baby with Down syndrome. So she told me to come in the next day and have my blood drawn for the panorama test, which is where they, I really am not sure how to explain it, but they basically can check the baby's chromosomes and see if they look normal and it's supposed to be 99% accurate and a lot better than having the amniocentesis. So of course all of this was really upsetting and I didn't really know what to think, but of course I was doing a lot of researching online and a lot of women who have had a 1 in 27 chance or even a 1 in 10 chance ended up having normal babies, but you still have that feeling of it not being normal, therefore there's still a chance. So she also said that she would refer me back to the High Risk Pregnancy Center. Um, and I said, oh yeah, I was just there on Friday. And she was like, for what? Which was really confusing because she had sent me there for my cervix and she didn't remember that she had done that and she was looking at my file right in front of her but whatever that's just one of the reasons I'm going to switch after we get these test results back but um she wanted to send me back for a level two ultrasound which is what I had just had on Friday yesterday I went and I had my blood drawn they said that it takes 10 business days for the results to come back which means that the results should be back by the 17th of this month. And today, which is Wednesday, Nick and I went back to the High Risk Pregnancy Center and met with a genetic counselor. Um, I think that was a little bit more comforting because she was able to give us a little bit more of, a little bit more detailed information on the odds. And normally for somebody my age, it's one in 990 that the test results are supposed to come back. Mine were one in 247, which is less than half a percent. I didn't end up having another level two scan because there were no markers on the scan on Friday, so everything looks okay with that. So now basically we just wait and um, I think the past two days were pretty difficult, but I'm feeling a lot better after being more educated on the situation. So overall, I think what I've decided in this past week is that I will no longer be going to this midwife once I receive these results. I'm going to find a different doctor and hopefully everything can just go smoothly after this because it's definitely been a crazy week. Round leg and pains have still been really painful at night especially and sleeping has been difficult but I guess it's only going to get worse from here and thankfully that's just my only symptom for this week, I think. Yeah, I, other than my weight, I took my waist and belly measurements and my waist is 29 inches and my stomach is 31 inches, which is the same as 21 weeks. So nothing really there, but I do feel like the baby is getting bigger. Like I can actually kind of feel the bulge where she sits most of the time. So I think that's going to be it for my 22 week pregnancy vlog. I'm going to go ahead and do the bump shot right now and I will see you guys next week for 23 weeks. Bye. You're practicing with Oliver. <laughs> Are you my baby? Alright, there you go. Tell Are him. you my baby? Tell him you're practicing with Oliver. Okay, but really, we gotta do it now. Okay, I'm gonna put you down. Okay. Alright, so this is 22 weeks and one day to the front. Right? One day? Yeah. One day. 
and the side. Front. 